welcome to today's video. My name's Alex, Alex from Travels, and this is my channel, um, Aim and Travels Photography. Thank you for coming along and having a little look at this video. Um, today we're going to look at exposure, so the, the main settings for controlling your exposure, which are shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. So let's have a look, shall we? Right, so before we start looking at shutter speed, aperture, or ISO, um, individually we're just going to talk very quickly about exposure and um, how it's measured more than anything else so people will refer to something called stops so when you're looking at a stop it's a stop of light so if you go up one stop you double the amount of light and if you go down one stop you half the amount of light now this refers to all three so ISO you'll go up or down a stop um, Aperture, up or down and stop, and shutter speed is exactly the same. Now, something really important with this. Most cameras, they'll go in thirds. So every time you adjust your little wheel, you do one click, you're adjusting it one third, unless you've changed the settings. Some do halves, but generally it's one third. So it doesn't matter which you're controlling, whether it's the shutter speed, the ISO, um, or the aperture, one click is one third of a stop, i.e. if you're trying to um, add more light to your picture, if you go one stop, you'll double the amount of brightness, so you'll double the, the brightness of the, the result. Now that's really, as soon as you know that, it's really easy to then use your camera. So if you're taking a picture of a subject and you go, hang on a minute, this is too dark. The picture is going to look too dark, I need to double the amount of light. You do one, two, three. Three clicks with your camera will double or halve the exposure. Whether you're controlling ISO, aperture, or shutter speed, that all work in thirds. Once you get used to that, everything else is a doddle. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is aperture. So first of all, what is aperture? Aperture is the size of the opening within your lens. So within the lens, there's something called aperture blades and they clamp down to reduce the size of the opening within the lens. So they can clamp down and they can open up. And obviously if you've got a smaller hole, that's gonna allow less light into the lens compared to a larger hole. So over a set period of time, so let's say a second. So if you've got a large hole and it's open for one second, it's gonna allow X amount of lighting. If you reduce the size of that hole over the same period of time, it's obviously going to allow less light into the camera. Now, less light will obviously reduce the exposure, so you'll end up with a darker image compared to the, the shot with the really wide aperture, the really large hole. Aperture is measured in something called f stops. Now, f stops are a little bit strange, so don't worry if they don't make a huge amount of sense initially. Um, f-stops work backwards to, to how you'd imagine so if, if we're talking the size of the hole so if you need to open up your lens to be as large as possible to be after the biggest opening you use the smallest f number so for example this lens here is a tamron 35 mil f 1.8 now that f 1.8 is its largest aperture so the largest hole inside this lens. So in a dark environment I would shoot that at f 1.8 that would be the largest aperture that I can use. Now going back to what we spoke about earlier about stops this is where things get a little bit confusing. So let's talk about f2. You'd assume that if you got f2 if you half the amount of light you'd be at f4 because 4 is two times two. And then again, F8 would be half compared to F4. But unfortunately, it's not the case. So we're gonna start off at F2, because it's the easiest to work with. If I'm shooting get F2, let's pretend I've got a lens and the maximum aperture is F2, so that's as wide as it can go. If I need to half the amount of light in my image, I'll do three clicks from F2, and that will take me to F2.8. And then from f2.8, if I need to half that again, three clicks, that'll take me to f4. 
and then again to f5.6, and then to f8, f11, f16, and finally 22. Now, at your lens's widest aperture, so let's take my timeline for example, which is f1.8, it will have the narrowest depth of field. So depth of field is the amount of stuff that's in focus, the amount of things that are going to be in focus. So it's like a it's like an invisible line which you can't you don't know it's there, but it is there. It's a plane of focus. So if you're focusing on someone's eye, for example, you're doing a, a portrait. At f1.8 within a, a certain distance, anything that's an inch in front of that eye may be in focus, and anything that's an inch behind the eye will also be in focus. So if the person was to move an inch forward or an inch backwards, that would be out of focus. Right? Now sometimes you want that. Again, portrait. So that you'll get something called bokeh, which is the really nice, out of focus, blurry background, which everyone wants these days. So you shoot at 1.8 to get the most bokeh, which will be the, the smallest depth of field. Sometimes, however, you don't want that. You may be taking a photo of a landscape and you want the, the rocks in front of you and the mountains behind all to be in focus because you want it to be a nice landscape image. You'll use the, the narrowest aperture you can to create the biggest depth of field. So you may shoot at f11 or 16 or 22 and that depth of field range that was an inch at f1.8 is now 10 meters. So it's 10 meters behind and it's 10 meters before. It may even be greater than that everything for miles around may be in focus so that's why you don't always shoot wide open the next thing we're going to talk about is shutter speed now shutter speed is far simpler than aperture it actually makes a fair bit of sense so what is shutter speed simply put your shutter speed is the length of time that the aperture, that the lens is open for. So if you you take a picture, you click the button, the lens will open to allow the light in and then it will close again once the picture is taken. So the shutter speed is how long that happens for, that length of time. It's measured, let's say, in a duration, in a length of time. So it's nice and easy. So you've got things like you'll have a one second shutter speed or you'll have half a second shutter speed and then it will keep going, it will get quicker and quicker. So you can have a hundredth of a second or two hundredth of a second or a thousandth of a second. And that's all it is, it's just the duration of time. So if I'm shooting uh, and I've got a shutter speed of one second, if I need to double the amount of light, I'll do my three clicks and that will take me from one second to two seconds. Now obviously two seconds is twice as long as one. So within that period of time, the camera will absorb twice as much light. And again, we'll go from two seconds to four seconds, four seconds, eight seconds, 16, 32, etc. And again, when you're talking of hundredths, it's exactly the same. So let's say one one hundredth of a second. If I need to double um, that period, so I need to let twice as much light in, if I half that duration, so half of 100 is 50, we go from 1 one hundredth of a second to 1 50th of a second. Now if I need to reduce my light, so I need to speed up my shutter speed, I'll go from 1 one hundredth to 1 two hundredth, which is twice as fast, so therefore it will halve the duration, which will halve the amount of light. So. It's really important to think about your shutter speed whenever you're taking photos, especially if you're taking photos handheld without any sort of image stabilization in your in your camera or your lens, and taking photos of sports. So if you imagine your camera is taking a photo for one second, so let's go back to that one second shutter speed, things will happen within that one second. People will move, or things will move, or your hands will move with the camera, that sort of thing. All of that will be recorded within the image, within that one second. And what will happen is you'll have a blurry image because as things move, it'll, it'll record all of that movement within the picture and you'll end up with a blurred image. So what you need to do is use the fastest shutter speed that you can. One one hundredth of a second is pretty quick. People potentially won't really move within that second, so no um, 
movement will be recorded in your picture so you will have a sharp image whereas one second lots of things will happen within a one second period so you have lots of movement the last one so the last one of the three we've covered aperture we've covered shutter speed we're just going to talk about iso so what is iso first of all it's iso is your camera's sensitivity to light and that's all it is it's, it's it's how sensitive is my camera to the light now it's measured in a numerical value which doesn't really relate to anything so it's a little bit strange um, the base level for most cameras is iso 100. so at iso 100 your camera will be its least sensitive to light now that sounds like a bad thing but it's not so ISO 100, your camera is the least sensitive to light, but that will result in the highest quality images. So that'd be your, your best image quality, the ISO 100. Now, let's go back to our three clicks. If I'm shooting at ISO 100, and I need to double the exposure, I want to double the brightness of my image, I'll do three clicks to go from ISO 100 to ISO 200. And because it's numerical, it's nice and easy, you just double the number. Similar to shutter speed, let's ignore aperture for now. So if I'm 100, I double that, I'm at 200. So ISO 200, the picture will be twice as bright as ISO 100 because we've doubled the camera's sensitivity to the light. We'll then go from ISO 200 to ISO 400. Now ISO 400 will be twice as bright as ISO 200 and four times as bright as ISO 100 and you go from there so 400 800 1600 3200 etc and you'll keep going until your your maximum ISO as you use a, a higher ISO the image quality degrades so the image quality gets worse so a picture at ISO 100 will be a better looking image in terms of image quality than it will at 1600. Now that is because of something called noise, digital noise. It looks like speckles of dust, little specks in the images. Most notable, noticeable in the shadows. So you'll see these little specks of different colors and that sort of thing, and that's noise. Some cameras are better at handling noise than others, so high ISOs, but even so, if you're shooting at 1600, you're gonna have more noise, i.e. lesser image quality than you are at ISO 100. So it's a bit of a juggling act. On the flip side to that, don't think that you have to shoot at ISO 100 all of the time. Cameras these days are quite good at handling high ISOs. Most will go to ISO 800 or 1600 without a problem. It's only when you go to 32s and 6400 that it starts to get a little bit messy. If you're just putting them online especially, you're probably not even going to be able to tell the difference. If you're going to print images large scale, then you need to be careful of your ISO because if you print in a full size print for example you're going to notice this noise compared to ISO 100 where you get a nice clean file so it's a bit of a balancing act you want to use the lowest ISO you can but without causing the camera to, to take blurred photos because of a low shutter speed so as low as you can but without compromising the end result sometimes you just have to push it to 1600 or 3200 because otherwise you're going to have a mess of a blurry photo because the shutter speed is too low. And that's it. That's exposure in a nutshell. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and hopefully that's been useful for you. Um, any questions, pop them down below. And if there's any other videos that you might want to see, just let me know and uh, I'll see what I can do. Thank you very much. Um, give it a like and a follow if you don't mind. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.